Good morning, church, on this second Sunday of Advent and our uh, Christmas program. I'd like to welcome you to our service today. And at this point, we will have our beginning of our service with the Advent candle. On this second Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. He is the Prince of Peace, and the fruit of his presence is peace. Christ comes to bring justice, wholeness, and harmony to every relationship throughout all creation. He wants to continually grant us peace in every situation. Jesus, we pray, guide our feet into the path of peace. a special Sunday as we are celebrating the second Sunday of Advent. So I thought we would start our service with a song of praise, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Sing with me. Blessings flow for 
as we continue singing songs of praise this morning, the loved carols. The next one we're going to sing is Angels We Have Heard on High, singing o'er the plains as they came to the shepherds, as I'm sure that they were afraid as we would be if we were there and we saw angels as well. Enex Chelsea's Deo, which means in Latin, glory to God in the highest. Angels we have heard and high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply. of reading number 160, Messiah Brings Salvation. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. As we continue singing these songs, these carols, another one, hark the herald, angels sing, glory to the newborn king. S sing with me.
To Bethlehem as the shepherds did thousands of years ago we are invited to go to Bethlehem to reflect on Christ who came for us his ultimate purpose on earth was to die for us but in the meantime to understand our hurts, to understand our pains. He came and dwelt among us. Sing with me.
as we go to prayer this morning, the refrain from the carol we just sang a few moments ago, Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing with me. As we come before the Lord in prayer today, we have a number of prayer requests and situations happening in the church for the Hermans, for Roger Ford, and for Bruce Williams in particular. Lord, as we come before you today, this is the second Sunday of Advent. We're praising your name. We're in a celebratory mode and mood getting ready for Christmas, both spiritually, practically, and uh, as far as the Christmas season with the gift-giving and the getting together and all of the family gatherings, as limited as they may be. Lord, we bring our people before you today. And Lord, thinking of the Hermans, they were both in the hospital this past week. They're both at home now, uh, resting and recovering. Lord, as they are watching this morning, we ask for your blessing to be upon them as they recover. And Lord, for uh, Roger Ford, as he's uh, in a uh, center for uh, rehab, Lord, I bring Roger before you and ask for your blessing and your touch to be upon him as he recovers from his knee operation and the, the complications that have followed it. We ask for your touch upon him. And Lord, for uh, Bruce Williams, had another call for his, the second time around for a liver transplant and got there and they realized the, the liver was not suitable and not good for him. And Lord, we just the psychic energy that that takes, Lord, we bring him before you and ask for your blessing on him as he uh, waits patiently and quietly for a new liver. And Lord, for who we are, what we are, as we praise your name today, as we have our Christmas program, Lord, come and meet us. There, I'm sure we're not the only church in town today having their Christmas program. But Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, come and touch and meet with us today. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
as we go into this sermon today, just realizing it's the second Sunday of Advent, we're all familiar with the, uh, the manger story, the angels, the wise men, the gift giving, and uh, the shepherds, all of that. And that's uh, essentially very important, of course, to our thinking of what Christmas is all about. But on this second Sunday, I want to go back in time and in history and into a little bit of the backstory of why Jesus came and the Christmas story and the Christmas message. It's found in Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight the paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to see him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Now Mark's gospel begins by demonstrating that John the Baptist's, was John the Baptist's fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Both he, John, and Isaiah proclaimed, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Essentially, this is a call for repentance and righteous living, and it's tied to the theme. Our, tied to the theme are the words of comfort and good news as found in Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. So on this second Sunday of Advent, Mark and Isaiah are getting to the heart of really our Advent theme. Now, this is 2,000 years since Mark, and this is 2,500 years since Isaiah. But what are we doing now to prepare for Christmas? We're into the second week of Christmas. Things are starting to get hectic in terms of uh, what to purchase at the supermarket, what you're going to prepare, preparing cookies and pies and cakes ahead of time. Getting out there, whether we go to the mall or we go on Amazon looking at presents. The children at school have virtually uh, no Christmas programming this year, but there may be some virtual things we want to see our kids or grandkids in. And our limited family gatherings and our limited travel, but we are still looking forward to Christmas. Now, over against that, what do we need to do this season for spiritual and uh, kingdom preparation? I'm not talking about here at the church, do more decorations than what we have, have carol sings, go out knocking on doors and singing Christmas carols. That's probably not going to happen this season. But in the midst of this holiday preparation and frenzy, how do we prepare our hearts and minds? God's plan for preparation brings the actually the exact opposite of what the world would expect. Instead of panic, God brings peace. In the busyness of our lives, in the busyness of our lives, I want you at home now just to take a moment to stop and reflect and just rest in God's presence. 
we may never know why the people were so interested in John per se. He did get their attention. And as we reflect on this for a few minutes this morning in the story of Advent, ask yourselves these questions. Now close your mind, uh, close your mind, close your eyes. And from all of your Sunday school and biblical stories, go back and you're standing or sitting on the bank of the River Jordan and asking yourself, what do I see in my mind's eye? What do I hear in my mind's ear? What do I feel about this story? And what do I sense the text is saying to me in my time and place? Now in this we see a lot of powerful elements. Isaiah wrote, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. God was looking for a way to restore the relationship between man and him and with his people. The message is always one of hope, a renewal, recovery, and I like this one, new starts. At Christmas, the message of salvation can get lost in the noise of all of the Christmas pageantry, which we're not going to have this year, and the advertising media, their mantra is not put Christ back in Christmas. Their mantra is buy, buy, buy. The gospel is essentially about transformation, power, and renewal. Not the result of our own work. It's not like we've worked hard all year and expect a, a big Christmas bonus from the boss or from work. This bonus, this power comes only by and from the Holy Spirit. Now note the words in the wilderness, not the city. There are times we have to get away from the noise of civilization. There have been times where I've done spiritual retreats away from the, the noise and the clutter and the sounds of civilization. But note these words, prepare the way. In this time and place, when a nobleman came to the area, messengers were sent out before him, and they were to announce he was coming and make preparations and make sure the timing was in the people's minds and heads. And in the wilderness indicates the message would come from somewhere outside the normal religious circles. And John fit the description perfectly. He hung out in the wilderness, baptizing in the River Jordan. He was a wild man, living and eating desert fare, essentially bugs and honey. Dressed like a wild man as well, not fashion conscious of the day, not, not dressed for success. He was preparing a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. It seems the whole Judean countryside and Jerusalem were out to see and hear what this guy was all about. And we're told many acknowledged their sin and accepted the water baptism of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. But John's message pointed to someone and something far greater than himself. He directed them to Jesus. Scripture tells us he was unworthy to untie his sandals. His baptism was with water, but Jesus was with the Holy Spirit. He was the one who could bring salvation, restore the relationship between man and God. In today's vernacular, we might be saying, well, look out, look out, here comes Jesus. God was at work in the centuries between Isaiah's statements and between Isaiah and John. We have no scriptural record of that. But along come, comes this crazy man who ate bugs and honey and wore an unfashionable coat of camels here. But people streamed out into the wilderness to hear him. In essence, they were shocked out of their spiritual sleep. It would be like on Sunday morning, you're trying to sleep in, 
the kids want to go to Sunday school and you don't want to get out of bed, so they get the bright idea of going into the kitchen, getting a pan of water, throwing in some ice cubes for good measure, sneaking into the bedroom and throwing it on your head and face. You're not prepared for the shock. It takes your breath away. But you are, are aware of the new reality. And I think this, from what I can understand, this would be a fair and accurate account of the new baptism. The people of the day had got bogged down in their rules and regulations of the religion rather than the object of their worship. There are times that we need to have wake-up calls. Once in a while, maybe we need a crazy man to rant and rave and get in our faces to remind us of our relationship with God. And the water, that's only the beginning. This Advent, may we meet such a crazy man. Not Santa Claus, not Kris Kringle, not Father Christmas, not St. Nicholas or one of his elves. Advent is the wake-up call to the church. Now, we can admire the manger scene, adore what Jesus did on the cross, and forget what is God doing in this world. God is still working in this world on a daily basis in the midst and in spite of COVID-19. Now, note the little word, way, in this passage. Advent reminds us that God is calling us to a different way, the way of the cross, the way of the kingdom, the way of Jesus, and we need to follow the Messiah into the kingdom. John warns us to be prepared to live differently. He was a different kind of prophet. We are a different kind of people when we have the power of the Holy Spirit working in us. As we get ready for the Messiah and the kingdom this season, think about what really happened, what was really going on with the birth of Christ, the manger scene, the angels, the gifts, the three kings, and not allow the noise and the craziness of this Christmas season to push out and shout down the message. The reason for the season is Jesus Christ. Well, it's been wonderful to have you worshiping with us this morning, or whenever it is that you are watching this broadcast via Facebook and YouTube. We are holding live services at our church building in our lovely sanctuary every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Uh, but so thankful that you can watch this way. Our last song today that we will sing together, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And that is our challenge, is not to share, is not to hold on to this good news but to share it with others. And especially at this point in time, they need to hear some good news. Don't you like hearing good news? Yes, Jesus Christ is born. He is alive and dwells among us. Let's sing together.
announcements announcements Sunday school as usual and we do have Wednesday night now on zoom finally with uh, two weeks of uh, having technical issues we are back online so if, uh, for those of you that are not on my uh, invitation list if you would like to be on that please let me know and I'll send the invite out to you probably around six o'clock on Wednesday for the seven o'clock service. It's been good to uh, worship and fellowship with you today. And as we close, as we part ways for the week, Lord, may your blessing and your power and your peace be upon each and every one of us as we make our way doing our work aspects, our errand aspects, and in spite and through and in the midst of this COVID-19 May people know through us and by us the reason for the season. God bless you. And God's peace and protection be upon you. Amen.